Excerpt from An Autumn Effect. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Bill Mosley. Excerpt from An Autumn Effect by Robert Louis Stevenson. From Essays of Travel. LibriVox Coffee Break Collection, number 9. Excerpt from An Autumn Effect by Robert Louis Stevenson I begin my little pilgrimage in the most enviable of all humors, that in which a person with a sufficiency of money and a knapsack turns his back on a town and walks forward into a country of which he knows only by the vague report of others. Such an one has not surrendered his will, and contracted for the next hundred miles, like a man on a railway. He may change his mind at every finger-post, and where ways meet follow vague preferences freely, and go the low road or the high, choose the shadow or the sunshine, suffer himself to be tempted by the lane that turns immediately into the woods, or the broad road that lies open before him into the distance and shows him the far-off spires of some city, or a range of mountain-tops, or a rim of sea, perhaps, along a low horizon. In short, he may gratify his every whim and fancy without a pang of reproving conscience or the least jostle to his self-respect. It is true, however, that most men do not possess the faculty of free action, the priceless gift of being able to live for the moment only, and as they begin to go forward on their journey, they will find that they have made for themselves new fetters. Slight projects they may have entertained for a moment, half in jest, become iron laws to them, they know not why. They will be led by the nose by these vague reports, of which I spoke above, and the mere fact that their informant mentioned one village and not another will compel their footsteps with inexplicable power. And yet a little while, yet a few days of this fictitious liberty, and they will begin to hear imperious voices calling upon them to return, and some passion, some duty, some worthy or unworthy expectation will set its hand upon their shoulder and lead them back into the old paths. Once and again we have all made the experiment. We know the end of it right well. And yet, if we make it for the hundredth time tomorrow, it will have the same charm as ever. Our heart will beat and our eyes will be bright as we leave the town behind us and we shall feel once again, as we have felt so often before, that we are cutting ourselves loose forever from our whole past life, with all its sins and follies and circumscriptions, and go forward as a new creature into a new world. It is well, perhaps, that I had this first enthusiasm to encourage me up the long hill above high wycombe for the day was a bad day for walking at best and now began to draw towards afternoon dull heavy and lifeless a pall of grey cloud covered the sky and its colour reacted on the colour of the landscape near at hand indeed the hedgerow trees were still fairly green shot through with bright autumnal yellows bright as sunshine but a little way off the solid bricks of woodland that lay squarely on slope and hilltop were not green, but russet and grey, and ever less russet and more grey as they drew off into the distance. As they drew off into the distance also, the woods seemed to mass themselves together and lie thin and straight like clouds upon the limit of one's view. Not that this massing was complete, or gave the idea of any extent of forest, 
for every here and there the trees would break up and go down into a valley in open order or stand in long indian file along the horizon tree after tree relieved foolishly enough against the sky i say foolishly enough although i have seen the effect employed cleverly in art and such long line of single trees thrown out against the customary sunset of a japanese picture with a certain fantastic effect that was not to be despised but this was over water and level land where it did not jar as here with the soft contour of hills and valleys the whole scene had an indefinable look of being painted the color was so abstract and correct and there was something so sketchy and merely impressional about these distant single trees on the horizon that one was forced to think of it all as of a clever french landscape for it is rather in nature that we see resemblance to art than in art to nature and we say a hundred times how like a picture for once that we say how like the truth the forms in which we learn to think of landscape are forms that we have got from painted canvas any man can see and understand a picture it is reserved for the few to separate anything out of the confusion of nature and see that distinctly and with intelligence the sun came out before i had been long on my way and as i had got by that time to the top of the ascent and was now treading a labyrinth of confined by-roads my whole view brightened considerably in color for it was the distance only that was gray and cold and the distance i could see no longer overhead there was a wonderful caroling of larks which seemed to follow me as i went indeed during all that time i was in that country the larks did not desert me the air was alive with them from high wycombe to tring and as day after day their shrill delight fell upon me out of the vacant sky they began to take such a prominence over other conditions and form so integral a part of my conception of the country that i could have baptized it the country of larks this of course might just as well have been in early spring but everything else was deeply imbued with the sentiment of the later year there was no stir of insects in the grass the sunshine was more golden and gave less heat than summer sunshine and the shadows under the hedge were somewhat blue and misty it was only in autumn that you could have seen the mingled green and yellow of the elm foliage and the fallen trees that lay about the road and covered the surface of wayside pools so thickly that the sun was reflected only here and there from little joints and pinholes in that brown coat of proof or that your ear would have been troubled as you went forward by the occasional report of fowling pieces from all directions and all degrees of distance End of Excerpt from an Autumn Effect by Robert Louis Stevenson Recording by Bill Mosley, Llano County, Texas, USA